Hi, this is Rick Spire. I'm a senior product manager for uh, marketing manager for Cisco. Uh, and with me today, we have uh, Drew Iacone, who's part of our global sales strategy for SAP and our sales uh, organization. And we have Eric Lillestolen, who is a senior product manager in our uh, business unit. So uh, wanted to uh, uh, discuss today uh, a little bit about SAP and a little bit about TDI and some of the things that we're doing around uh, those uh, those technologies and those solutions. Uh, so the person that uh, is up is Drew Iacone. He'll be speaking first, and then uh, he'll turn that over to Eric in, in a little bit. And then I'm going to close this out by uh, uh, talking to you a little bit about an IDC uh, white paper that's been produced uh, that talks about SAP on UCS specifically. So Drew, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thanks, Rick. So. Uh, so thank you everybody for joining today. We're going to be covering a couple of topics uh, and, and predominantly just introducing Cisco as a mission critical application platform for workloads like SAP. So um, the, you know, the agenda is uh, pretty straightforward. We're going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, why SAP for Cisco, why SAP on Cisco UCS. Then we're going to overview the, uh, the the offerings for SAP HANA and specifically how you deploy HANA via TDI, um, and that's what we're going to cover today. So, in terms of uh, just understanding SAP and Cisco, we we wanted to talk just briefly about who SAP is um, and who SAP also is, right? So SAP is number one uh, in the ERP suite space, right? Not not by a little bit, but by a lot. Right, they've got almost 2x the market share of any rival, and they've recently acquired uh, Concur, which even increases their market share. So this is more than just uh, ERP. You know, for many customers, and and specifically to the line of business, you know, SAP is the system of record. Right, it's also the process platform that the line of business uses to run the company. So specifically. You know, supply chain, manufacturing, sales, and finance, they look at SAP as their predominant platform that they use to run their business. And when you talk about process, you get into a conversation uh, to a basis administrator where, where all of that translates into something that they'll refer to as SAP modules or components, right, or add-on modules to those different suite components, right? Or, or non-SAP modules or certain bolt-ons that, that they didn't get the functionality or the process that they needed from SAP. The basis administrators will also talk about the OS and databases underneath those SAP modules, right? The administrative consoles required to run the SAP landscape and all the application lifecycle management issues that come along with it. This specifically includes the OS and database migrations from any database to SAP's HANA database, which we'll talk about today. To the IT architect, you know, when you hear about all these SAP modules, that translates into virtual machines or VMs or bare metal servers for some of the larger OSs, right? Dependency and adjacency implications between those VMs and bare metal servers that need to be mitigated, right? And that's all across the production landscape. So in, in aggregate, you know, SAP is an architecture and capacity planning challenge that is best addressed by either moving it into the cloud, and there are a number of cloud-first initiatives that come into to the equation, or by putting the SAP deployment on integrated infrastructure solutions like Cisco UCS. Oftentimes, customers are considering both, right? So, you know, from a simplicity perspective, it's important to understand that, you know, this really translates into small, medium, and large deployments on integrated infrastructure solutions from UCS, right? Typically, the SAP landscape in production has anywhere between 20 and 50 VMs and OS instances of various sizes that are all running together. This includes HANA, right? We have a very simplified deployment and ease of ongoing operations associated with UCS, which we'll talk about today. So in terms of integrated infrastructure, Cisco is ranked number one by both Gartner in terms of just uh, Magic Quadrant and visionary uh, approach to our, our space and by IDC in terms of market traction and adoption, right? We have thousands of customers that have successfully deployed uh, uh, converged or integrated infrastructure solutions, both from the NetApp perspective with FlexPod and from a VCE perspective with things like vBlock, right? And when you look at from a research perspective, that, that's where you'll see a Gartner, but then you can also see this show up from IDC, right? 
So the visual uh, that you see here kind of shows that not only is the research indicating that we're somebody that you should talk to about integrated infrastructure, but the market share indicates that we've essentially got about 50% of the customer uh, market opportunity has, has landed on, on Cisco. So it, it's, a, it's important to, to understand that, you know, we, we come from a heritage uh, outside of the SAP world where, where we didn't participate uh, in the compute space the last time most SAP customers implemented or, or platformed, right? But we, have, we put UCS uh, into the market about four years ago, excuse me, five years ago in 2009. And we've gradually grown that to be the number one blade vendor in the world. We've got, you know, 33,000 unique customers. And again, that number one rating in the integrated infrastructure space, right? We've done fantastically well within the Fortune 500. And we've demonstrated, you know, every time Intel comes out with a new chip, we tend to come across with the top five or six industry benchmarks that would represent balanced performance, top performance, in any type of workload, we generate those world records. So these are not always, uh, you know, across the board, older benchmarks. These are all the current benchmarks. So it's about six to 10 every time we have a new Intel chip come out. So with respect to, you know, integrated infrastructure, you know, it, it comes into Cisco's program called the Cisco Validated Designs or CBDs. And that includes the ability to deploy HANA via TDI, right? And it goes beyond world record performance and scalability of the SAP workloads. So SAP's HANA portfolio is really the HANA real-time data platform, right? And that's a combination of all those different workloads that need to run together, right? Again, that's your 20 to 50 VMs that need to be running in the landscape, including HANA, right? Cisco has tested for these Cisco validated designs all of the hardware required to run the compute and the network fabric together. We've worked with NetApp, EMC, IBM, and soon Nimble to make sure that we've got low-level hardware compatibility at that firmware level with those storage vendors, right, and many others. And then we're hypervisor agnostic, but we've got extensive amount of experience deploying SAP on VMware, Microsoft Hyper-V, and now with Red Hat and KVM, right? The other thing is that, you know, there's an extensive amount of documentation required when you get into how you build and how you architect. We've put together a fantastic library of technical white papers and detailed design guides on exactly how you do that. That goes from how you build it in one data center with things like high availability into how you link two data centers together for disaster tolerance scatter, uh, strategies. Right now, you know, beyond that, at the platform level, we've even done an extensive amount of testing and documentation on how you deploy SAP specifically on that integrated infrastructure stack from from Cisco. Right. So those are some documents that we've got, uh, on like in how you deploy SAP on a FlexPod or how you deploy SAP on a V Block. Right. And we're 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 working feverishly to make sure that all that documentation is up to date and current based on what you're trying to do. And then most importantly for many SAP customers is that they can get an end-to-end -end support contract without having to pay an extensive amount of money for a managed hosting agreement. So Cisco's got a solution support for critical infrastructure offering and other offerings for that matter that take the hardware, including the hypervisors and the guest operating systems and the third-party components, mainly the storage, but other third-party components, and giving the customer an end-to-end -end support contract for that entire stack or that entire integrated infrastructure solution. So in, in terms of the overview, um, we wanted to cover just a high level about, you know, what are the solutions for SAP specifically and give a brief overview of what UCS is. So for the SAP landscape, it's really a set of simple building blocks that come from our unified data center portfolio, right? There are solutions for core SAP and then there are solutions for HANA. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about both portfolios today. So just generally speaking, we have, you know, some high-level building blocks. So mainly it's in the unified fabric department. So we've got our Nexus portfolio, our MDS portfolio, and how you put that together with our UCS fabric. We've got blades, UCS blades of varying sizes, anywhere from two to four socket, Intel E5 or Intel E7 blades. And then we've got Hadoop, right? These are commodity storage nodes, small, uh, uh, small or large uh, form factor drives 
to get your uh, Hadoop or big data requirements mapped into the SAP landscape. And again, the foundation of the, of the core SAP portfolio comes into the Cisco validated designs and how you put together private clouds, right? And then on the HANA side, there's this discussion around scaling up versus scaling out, and we'll talk about that today and how you put those together. So um, a little bit about, about UCS, uh, just to give a, a deep, uh, deeper understanding and a, and a brief overview of UCS, right? So we have essentially you know, three, three layers to the architecture, right? So at, at the blade level, we offer a robust portfolio of blades. These are two to four socket blades, and these are typically two to four socket Intel-based uh, rack servers, right? And we have the ability to provide a unified management of both blade and rack servers together. And this is true for both blade and rack servers. We Anything connected into the UCS architecture has this concept of virtualized I.O., meaning that we, we connect uh, to, the, to, the, to the blade and we provide active, active, non-blocking fabric all the way down to the blade. There's a, there's a dedicated uh, virtual interface card that's built inside the, the rack servers and built inside the blade servers that allows us to, to, uh, to virtualize, if you will, the network card and virtualize and create HBAs inside, inside the UCS uh, compute nodes. That's all delivered here. We aggregate the bandwidth. Uh, all the downstream ports are active. They're all 10 gig ports, and we can aggregate them together. So we can create, you know, 20 gig, 40 gig, or even 80 gig port channels. And again, this is non-blocking to both sides of the blade chassis. The, the the brains of the of the operation are really in in what we call the UCS fabric or the unified fabric. These are the fabric interconnects, right? We have essentially two sizes. We have a 48 port and a 96 port fabric interconnect that live outside the chassis and we have a new smaller form factor UCS fabric interconnect that lives inside the chassis. And that's where we're going to be running all of that uh, unified uh, virtualized I.O. and centralized management of all the resources uh, down on the downstream side. This uh, particular solution is also a unified port if you're a Nexus uh, uh, fan or, or familiar with the Nexus line, the unified ports allow you to uh, connect upstream uh, to a variety of different devices, including directly into fiber channel arrays uh, instead of having to connect into, um, into upstream networking. So one of the main differentiators that we bring to the market is an embedded management that allows us to do stateless computing and centralized administration of the entire SAP landscape from one centralized console. That's called UCS Manager, right? So I'll talk about that briefly. So what we do with, SAP, with, with, with respect to UCS is something called a service profile, and this is designed to kind of explain what a service profile is. Right, if you're familiar with the concept of a SIM card, right, where you can take the identity from one phone and move it to another phone and move it to another phone and your, and your phone number will change with that SIM card and the content on that SIM card will come with you to the new phone. That's a lot like a service profile. So the identity of a server is referred to as a UUID, right, MAC addresses and things along those lines. That's all contained in a, in a logical object that's managed at the fabric level. And we literally apply it to the blade or to the rack server, just like you would move a SIM card. We can move the identity from a blade server to a rack server, from a slower blade server to a newer blade server. This is particularly important to IT and, 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 and basis administrators when they look to you know, do technology refresh and upgrades from old, older infrastructure to newer infrastructure. This includes, you know, at the lowest level, you know, full hardware state abstraction. So you don't have to log into the server, the policy for the BIOS, the policy for the NIC, you know, send and receive rates, the policy for the firmware, that's all set in the service profile. How you want to connect to the storage, what the worldwide node name is, what the worldwide port name is, all that's contained in the service profile. And then from a network perspective, what VLANs do you want to put this particular server in? Right, so this helps you with logical isolation and configuring the server to sit in the network in a certain location. Uh, that's particularly important for all the SAP landscapes out there. Right, so this is essentially just, you know, ultimately how it works, right? So we can take a, a full rack of infrastructure, blade and rack uh, servers uh, together, and we could 
create these logical objects called service profiles and we could put those anywhere, right? I could put these service profiles, you know, from the fabric on any of the UCS uh, uh, downstream uh, compute nodes, either Blade or Rack servers, which very much simplifies how you deploy and how you, uh, how you manage your, your UCS infrastructure, your compute infrastructure going forward, right? Um, the, the UCS portfolio is not just the Blade and Rack servers. You know, we've got, you know, we've got core data center solutions, which we're going to focus on uh, today, but we've got cloud scale architectures. We've got, you know, campus and edge class solutions, right? And then just from a, a, a portfolio a maturity perspective, this is the fourth release uh, of, of the UCS product. So we had, uh, we called it M1. Then we have M2, M3. Now we're on to our M4 release. So we stay in step with Intel as they bring out new portfolios and new chipsets. We bring out those next chipsets. This is the fourth significant release uh, of our of our unified uh, compute uh, solutions for for um, for the customers. So with respects to why uh, customers have chosen to run you know their SAP deployment on Cisco. Uh, UCS integrated infrastructure, you know, again, you know, it, it's all those VMs are very dependent on each other, right? And and customers want a long-term, you know, risk mitigated solution, right? So that's where Cisco comes in. We have a long-term risk risk mitigated solutions. I apologize for the typo. Um, the other thing is that, you know, we have every possible benchmark in every possible workload category that matters specifically to SAP. We have a number of the top marks with respect to how SAP runs and how to optimize SAP to run as a workload, right? We also are number one in all these categories. We're number one in the cloud. We're number one in, in the data center. We're number one in Blade. That's not only important just because it just shows that we, we've done very good from a price performance perspective. It also, it's also, you know, credit to the fact that there's, a, there's easy ways to get people that know how to work with with the, the solutions that we have out here. So there, these are ubiquitously available so solutions and there's lots of talent out there that knows how to run the Cisco UCS portfolio, right? And we have a great strategy uh, and there's a lot of alignment between what we're trying to do at Cisco and what SAP is trying to do. When you think about real time and the real time data platform, you know, it, it's a lot of network dependencies, right? You have a, you have a significant amount of, of uh, issues that can come forward when you think about an end user, you know, potentially, you know, at a convenience store trying to access SAP from a mobile strategy, you know, working through all those different networks, potentially some not even your network as an end customer, and trying to get a real-time result, right? And when you look at how you get real-time, you know, seconds matter. And when you look at, you know, putting SAP you know, on the network, you know, Cisco is best positioned to help customers put put SAP on the network and run it at the speed of the network. And if there's a problem, we're probably best positioned to help you solve that problem. So with, with that, you know, I wanted to turn it over to, to Eric Littlestone from the Cisco HANA BU to talk about our HANA portfolio and specifically TDI. Thanks, Drew. Appreciate it. Hey, hey everybody. My name is Eric Littlestone. I'm the solution product manager for our SAP business here at Cisco. So uh, I'm working quite a bit with uh, SAP on go forward roadmaps and the other activities that we do with SAP, not only with uh, HANA, but with the work that we do in the cloud and in other things and, and in other areas as well. So uh, it's my pleasure to be chatting with you today. I wanted to start off by highlighting the overview of the Cisco portfolio and the strength of that portfolio that we are bringing to the SAP landscape. Uh, Drew just did a great job of highlighting the value that UCS has in the server market and how that value that we have in that market translates into an SAP implementation. Uh, we have some very strong products in the market with uh, VCE and the VBlock and with NetApp around the FlexPod. These are converged infrastructure solutions that are available today for, that meet your SAP needs. And so usually uh, when you're talking about HANA, HANA is part of that conversation. It's part of the overall strategy 
that we frequently see our customers making those decisions. And there's a, a play for the, the overall landscape. How does it all fit together? How do I bring HANA into my landscape? How do I add flexibility? How do I reduce the TCL? If you look at our VBlock and FlexPod offerings, you'll find that, that by far these are the number one offerings in the market today to support an SAP landscape. Moving to the left, the second box there we have the B200, C220, C240, and then our networking VIC cards, the 1300 series. These servers are outstanding for SAP application workloads. Uh, we have benchmarks that indicate some leading uh, benchmarks in the market. We've captured a number of records for not only SAP, but all the other application benchmarks that are out there. Uh, po very powerful boxes and you have flexibility whether you want to use blades or rack mount servers. Uh, they're all available and they are managed by the UCS manager so you have the flexibility of moving around as, as your demand makes it. Then moving on to the left where we are getting into the SAP HANA solution and in that space for the servers we are using uh, three servers the B260, the C460 and the B460. These are two socket, the B260, and our four socket, the C460, and the B460, are the workhorse for a majority of the SAP HANA workloads, whether that be a suite on HANA, a BW, or HANA Analytics. And then we've just introduced a new eight socket server. This is the C880. It's uh, built specifically for SAP, uh, brought to you by Cisco. This server is for both analytics, whether that be BW or an analytic workload that's separately developed, and also for the larger suite on HANA workloads. We are seeing some larger adoptions that are happening in the market, and this 8-socket server fits perfectly into that space. So as you're looking at the Cisco portfolio, I think the first thing we want to highlight is there is the, the general capability that x86 brings to that space, but also the value that UCS brings to us, all the way from HANA, all the way up through the overall and entire SAP landscape. Very solid offering. Let's go to the next slide. This slide uh, shows us a little bit about the portfolio that Cisco brings for uh, SAP HANA. Generally speaking, HANA is broken into two categories. There is basically the analytic category and then the transactional category. And you'll hear the term suite on HANA and it's the acronym SOH. On the analytic side, this is pretty CPU intensive. It's got a lot of uh, compute capabilities that are being leveraged by the HANA. We have offerings that go from the very small with a blade offering that you just basically we call it HANA on a blade. You buy the blade, you stick it in, you're off and running. Uh, all the way up through our C460s, which we can go from uh, anything from a 128 gig up to a 1 terabyte. And then we're bringing in the big C880, our 8 socket server, which addresses up to 2 terabytes per node. And then we start talking about uh, scale up servers with a B460. Uh, this is really attractive for service providers or for private cloud where you're looking at having a pool of servers, you want to pull out one server and you want to use that as a HANA application, or excuse me, a HANA server. And then we have our scale out solution. As you can see here, we have a 16 node scale out with the NetApp and a similar 16 node with EMC. Uh, capability wise, uh, these scale much larger than 16 nodes. Uh, this is just the size that we have certified with SAP, uh, but we have a number of installations that are clearly larger than this. On a transactional, we do have a two socket B260, which can be used for up to 256 gig. Uh, but what we primarily see for the workload is on the four socket server, where we see the C460. I will say that we're seeing mostly one terabyte, two terabyte, occasional three terabyte on the C460. And then we have the C880. Uh, that's our six terabyte box for those really large suite on HANA deployments. Uh, and that's all of these products have been certified, available today in the market, SUSE, and we're closing out on all of our Red Hat certifications. So we have a very broad portfolio. 
I think the point that we want to highlight with this portfolio is we didn't actually create a new solution for HANA. We took the standard designs that we have for the industry standard servers, what we have brought through CVDs and other validated designs, and we tweaked it for a HANA application. So we have a large volume of solutions in the market today based on this very similar design, although not specifically for HANA. So a lot of experience in this space. Let's go to the next slide. In terms of the appliance, I just wanted to highlight very quickly what is the definition of an appliance per SAP because there's there's been a little confusion around this. The appliance is really defined as the software delivery model, and I'll get into what that means in a second. But essentially, when you're talking about an appliance, you're talking about the hardware, you're talking about the software, and you're talking about the services. We've already covered the hardware. I, I won't go over that again, but you should see some familiar server pictures here that we looked at just a couple of slides ago. On the software side, we, in the appliance, provide the operating system, SLUS for SAP, and we also provide the HANA software. That would be the SAP HANA. Now, clearly, the HANA software is purchased independently from the appliance. It's purchased directly from SAP. We are loading it, configuring it, delivering it, and installing it into your space, which brings us to the services. On the services side, we are bundling a number of services with the appliance. These bundled services are not um, able to be uh, taken off due to the definition of the appliance with SAP. So these services include the services to physically build the system out, that SmartNet and SSPT, those are our support services. Uh, important to highlight that these are reactive support services. Think of it as break fix, but they are single point of contact. Regardless of what material is in the solution, even third party, uh, whether that be NetApp or whether that be EMC or Novell or Red Hat, those are all covered under that support contract. It also includes the physical install. Uh, putting the data, you know, putting this appliance into your data center, and then finally the installation validation. So this is the making sure that the system is installed, it is updated, that it is the latest revision that you as the customer would like to have, and that the keys are handed over and you are ready to move forward. What is not included in these services is what I would call a proactive lifecycle management service. Uh, this is not part of the SAP definition of an appliance, and, and I need to call that out separately because a lot of appliances have the intention of providing that. In the SAP definition, uh, those lifecycle management services, things like patching, things like updating, things like upgrading, those are not included in the appliance package. So it's something important to be aware of. Cisco, we do, we do offer those services. They are available. They are just not part of the appliance purchase. Let's go to the next slide. So the appliance, it's a great tool. It has a place, and that place is where you are looking at doing a dedicated implementation. And a dedicated implementation is one where you have a high dependency on a uh, very um, performant and repeatable system. The system will perform, it is performing at a validated level, it has been designed and tested, it stands by itself, it doesn't share anything, but you know that you're going to get the performance out of it. But a number of uh, advances in the market has happened where you're going beyond just a single HANA use case, now there are multiple use cases. You're seeing more analytics, you're seeing more applications, you're seeing transactional workloads, you're seeing integration with Hadoop and big data. Having a dedicated appliance no longer works. And SAP heard that message loud and clear, and they introduced this new um, delivery model called TDI, Tailored Data Center Integration. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about that, but essentially at a very high level, it brings the flexibility of being able to use your existing or data center uh, components or to share the components, the workload across multiple application use cases. And then the natural extension of that is from 
taking that TDI implementation, that shared multi instance, and wrapping around it a dynamic management, which allows you to have a quote cloud experience, a private cloud or a public cloud. And so we're seeing an expansion of the uses, and at the same time, we're seeing an expansion of those deployment models. Let's go to the next slide. So uh, with what you're ending up with is something that looks like what you have here when you first introduced HANA. On the left, you had your dedicated appliances, and on your right, you were sharing everything else. And, and that was fine, but what was, what was really coming up quite frequently was processes, procedures, people's jobs, the way that purchases were made. They were all being challenged by the separation model. Let's go to the next slide. And so the idea was, let's treat HANA like we treat the rest of the applications in our data centers. Let's not separate it out if we don't need to. Let's figure out a way of being able to share the storage. Let's figure out a way of being able to share the networking. Let's be figure out a way of being able to virtualize some of this, like the rest of the applications are being managed in a data center today. So a big effort was made by, by uh, SAP to introduce this TDI model specifically for this purpose, to be able to leverage the investments both in people and hardware and processes to, to, to drive better adoption into that market. Let's go to the next slide. There are a number of different ways that a TDI can be implemented in your environment. Like I mentioned before, uh, in the appliance, you share nothing. Everything in that appliance is dedicated to the activity of that HANA implementation. So it has a very performant, very repeatable style. When you start going to TDI, you're looking at doing something like, I want to share my storage. I have two HANA implementations. Can I share the storage of those two? Or I have a storage mechanism that I'm using in my data center. Can I use it? Absolutely, you can. As long as that storage has been validated and certified by the storage vendor with SAP, it can be used in a HANA TDI environment. What about networking? Can I share my networking? I have data center backbone. Can I leverage that? Yes. With the latest release of Service Pack SPS09, back in November, SAP has started now general availability of being able to do shared network. Virtualization now being able to do some virtualization of the HANA database, bringing it underneath the same uh, vSphere control that the rest of the SAP applications are, is now supportable as a TDI implementation. SAP has just also introduced the availability of HANA on the E5 servers. This is a lower price point server. It's a two socket server. So for those smaller implementations, let's say up to maybe a terabyte, where you want, you're less concerned about performance, you know, cost is a high driver, then the E5 might be the right answer for you. Finally, SAP has, has let's say, opened the doors quite a bit for a non-production solution. The first four points were based on production environments. This one for non-production, you can do pretty much anything you want in a non-production environment. There are still some rules that apply if you want a system that works, but essentially you can overload the RAM, you can drive different processor selection your storage connectivity is different, lower network bandwidths, whatever you want. So, so there's a whole lot of activity that's going on there. Lots of things that you can do in the TDI space to help it fit into your data center environment. Let's go to the next slide. Benefits, I think we've covered a lot of these. Leveraging your existing technologies, you're reducing your cost. Now this can be purchase cost, but really when you're looking at TDI, you should be looking at it in terms of your total cost of ownership being able to leverage the hardware and processes and the people processes that you have already established, management tools, etc. Time to value can be faster if you go ahead with a HANA implementation because the hardware may already be available and on site. Uh, more flexibility in ha hardware vendors. Uh, you may choose to use a storage partner that Cisco is not in the appliance. For example, we've had a number of engagements where we're using Cisco UCS, Cisco networking with Hitachi storage. Uh, it's part of the supported ecosystem for TDI. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Let's talk about TDI. This slide may look familiar uh, to the appliance slide that we showed before, but what I've done is I've separated out so that now when you look at TDI, you should look at it as hardware 
and software and services, and you as the customer get to decide what is that combination that works best for you. Uh, you may already have the hardware that you need in the B460. You may only need to purchase the SLES for SAP and the component support that you require on the servers, and you'll take care of the designing of the system. You'll take care of the implementation and the support. That's a totally viable solution. It's all of those things that we can do. But you get to choose, and so there's great flexibility in that. But in general, these are the type of things that you can choose. As you can see, it's similar to the appliance, where in the appliance we choose, we design, we validate, certify, and support. On the TDI side, you get to choose, you get to design, you get to validate, and you get to support. Are you left alone with that? No, of course not. We have, we have documentation, we have services to help support with that, but ultimately the, this, this is a, a choice that you can make. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, so where are the big differences between the two? The, the biggest difference really is in the roles and responsibilities. And it's very important to be clear on where those roles and responsibilities lie. On the Cisco side, for the appliance, we will design, we will certify, we will deliver, we will install, we will provide a single throat to choke support, reactive support for that solution. We work with SAP for backend support transactions. If you open a ticket, we work in the back end with SAP to make sure that that ticket is closed. It's certified out of the box, ready to go. Your role is lifecycle management support. In the TDI space, the roles change significantly. In the TDI space, you as the customer are now responsible for component selection, design, implementation, certification, and support. And there are a few key things that we've highlighted there. In the support phase, you will have to determine where the component is that's at issue. It may be the software, it may be the hardware, it may be networking, it may be storage. This is now your responsibility to determine what is the correct avenue of support to pursue to resolve the issue. Performance, validating the testing, that's all part of the TDI experience that you can pick up. Are there services? Yes, we can work with you to be successful in this space. This is really no different than a standard SAP deployment. It's not really anything new from an SAP perspective, but it's important to highlight the differences between the appliance and the TDI and where are some of the pluses and some of the things you need to be aware of in terms of roles and responsibilities. Let's go to that next slide. I've mentioned a couple of times that Cisco is bringing services to help support. Uh, here is just a very high level view of some of the services that we offer in the TDI space to help you be successful. Uh, we at the bottom have Cisco AS services. These services are available to help with project management, the design, the implementation, orchestration. The SmartNet, that's our component support level. You can select various levels of support for the components. We also offer a solution level support. Uh, this is again reactive support, but in the sense of it being, think of it sort of like an appliance support. It's very similar in that if uh, you have an issue, you can call us and we will take on the responsibility of resolving the infrastructure part of that support. We also offer a HANA optimization. Think of this as uh, a support offering where we can provide proactive patches and updates on a regularly scheduled cycle. You may want every three months, every six months, or every year, you'll have a scheduled update update. We'll come in and we'll do that patching and update for you. And then all the way up to the top of the pyramid where we have the Cisco managed support so that even in a TDI environment, we would manage that for you on a day-to-day -day basis. And that would include um, all the issue resolution that comes with that. And we offer patching in that place as well. So there's a lot of services that we can bring to bear to help you in your environment as you go forward with TDI. A very, very similar service offering to what we bring for the appliance. Uh, the big difference is what's required and what's optional from between TDI and the appliance. Let's go to the next slide. So how can we help? We have a broad partner ecosystem. We're very tied into our partners to, to be able to address your needs. 
We have services that will help you do the plan and design and implement end-to-end -end experience. Uh, we can review your designs. We can make recommendations. Uh, we can invest in the system. We can do even the data loads, extract, transform, and load. Uh, the migration of your current data set off of a database onto this common database. A lot of operational reporting. Just a lot of services that we bring to bear to help you to be successful. And the great news about this is Cisco is one of the certified partners that can help with a TDI environment. SAP requires that whoever does that TDI install must be certified by SAP to do that install. Cisco is certified to do that. Even if you as the customer on your own were going to do it, you would have to be certified as well. So we have that certification effort that we can bring to bear, as well as all these expertise uh, that we can help to make your experience successful. So I think the message is whichever way you decide to go, whether it's on the client or it's in the TDI, we have things to make you be successful in that space. Let's go to the next slide. All right. It is my pleasure uh, to hand it over to Rick. Rick's going to talk to us a little bit about the IDC findings and kind of close us out. Here you go, Rick. Hey, thanks, Eric. All right, Drew, go ahead. All right, so <clears throat> this is what we'll cover. So in earlier in the year, we asked IDC to kind of go out and uh, talk to several of our customers uh, anonymously, you know, anonymously from you know, the Cisco standpoint, uh, and talk to them personally and find out, you know, how their installation went, you know, what uh, what benefits they were finding, what value they found for their business. Uh, just some of the different things that, that they would find from the customer in, in asking them some different questions. So <clears throat> uh, they went out and they, they conducted this study with 12 different customers. Uh, again, they conducted the custom, they conducted these interviews on the phone with them uh, uh, personally. You know, we were not involved in that at all because we didn't want to influence their comments at all. They, IDC did this as an independent study as they were going out, and they wanted to find out, you know, what they were doing from a, you know, and putting SAP onto DCS. So they, they talked to different customers that would, that maybe were converted infrastructure, you know, around FlexPods or VBlocks. They talked to some others that were just strictly HANA, uh, both from the appliance model and from the uh, scale-out model that uh, that Eric just uh, talked about. Uh, there were some that were just, you know, straight ERP on top of UCS. And so uh, here were some of the findings. All right, Drew, go ahead and advance one slide, please. So here's so here were the findings. So <clears throat> over a five-year period, they determined that there was a an ROI of 368 <clears throat> percent, big number, right? Uh, they were able to to lower their their total cost within their data center of almost five million dollars. They were able to get a payback in their you know for their investment you know in ten months. They were, you know, and, th and these bottom three are pretty important here. So they, they talked about a re reduction in staff time needed for server management uh, because they can manage the entire system through a UCS manager uh, of 68%. The deployment model, you know, putting in new blades, you know, and, uh, in advance and uh, getting a bigger architecture for what they were needed, they reduced their staff time needed for server deployment by 84%. You know, a lot of that goes back to some of the UCS things that uh, that Drew talked about initially about you know had, you know the service profiles and the way that they worked. You know, this was able to reduce their, their development or their deployment time by 84 percent. And then you know then the productivity time lost. You know, they were able to reduce that by 96 percent. These are big numbers, right? So, and again, you know, and I wanted to stress that this is you know this is an independent study by these guys. You know, without without really influence. Uh, you know, we helped them develop the questions for the things that we wanted to know, but you know, as a result of, of going through and talking to these customers, these were the these were the uh, statistics that they were able to come back with. So, you know, when when we were going out and talking to customers and we were telling them, you know, why you know why should you put these things on Cisco UCS as opposed to to other platforms, you know, all of these numbers you know fleshed out and were all you know you know right in front of them so they could kind of see what they were. All right, Drew, go ahead and advance this up. So <clears throat> again, so here are the you know here are the, the the six points to take home. 
Uh, we just talked about you know many of these things. Uh, <clears throat> all of these different you know aspects that are on there are all reasons why you know running SAP on top of UCS you know made sense to our customers. Go ahead, Drew. So <clears throat> that's a, that's the uh, the benefits of what I wanted to kind of talk about. Uh, I wanted to to go ahead and thank everybody today for attending this uh, this Google Hangout. It was a uh, a lot. Of, I know there's a lot of information. Uh, I'm sure as you go through these things, you'll be able to to uh, as you look at this a little bit later, you can kind of ask the Q and A as well, and uh, and ask some questions on there. You can uh, here are some some uh, websites that you can kind of go to in order to get additional information. Our public site is our GoSAP site that's on here. Uh, you can find out you know, all the information about our, our UCS product lines uh, on, the, on the Go UCS page. You can, uh, UCS Manager, which we talked about, you know, being able to manage the entire system, you can go to the UCS Manager page. And then the, uh, the public page for, for SAP is SAP.com. So I appreciate everybody you know, attending today. Appreciate uh, Eric and Drew for the, uh, for the comments that they made. And uh, for Renee for, for helping to set this up from an administrative standpoint, uh, uh, thank you for, for doing and uh, thank you for attending today.